Amen. Welcome, Facebook. Welcome, everybody who is online today. You guys look good. Amen. Y'all looking real good. <laughs> Amen. Okay, I don't look good, too. We're going to keep it moving. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Look, we've been doing infinite. We've been doing our infinite series. It's a play on word. It's infinite, but we're doing eight, but we're doing eight subjects. So every week we did a subject. Anybody remember what the first week was about? What was the overall oh, yeah. subject? Jericho. Yeah, Jericho. Jericho. Right. All right. Jericho. What was what was the second week about? Peter in the water, wasn't it? Peter in the water. Peter in the water. All right. What was the next week? What, what was the next week after that about? Peter in the water, part two. Yeah. Get up out of that boat. <laughs> right. Well, that was all in the same week. But what was the one after that? After the Peter in the water? What, the, what was the one we did last week? Eat the book. Eat the book. Eat the book. Eat the book. Oh, Jesus. Eat the book. Eat the book. What I <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I hear y'all. Y'all on it. Amen. So look, what we're going to talk about today, I still got eat the book open. I must really want to talk about that again. <laughs> Amen. We're going to talk about don't trust the masses. Mm -mm. Say again. Don't trust the masses. Don't trust the masses. You can say it with me if you want. Don't trust. Don't, don't trust, trust, trust the masses. The masses. The masses. I agree. Hmm. <laughs> Look at this. The last place you ever want to be if somebody starts shooting mm -hmm. is in the crowd. <laughs> That's true. Because they're just going to point at the crowd. And, and, get to, and, and just go to shoot. But if you get, that's why they tell you the first thing you do is hit that ground. Yeah. Because it separates you from the crowd. And we're going to mm -hmm. talk about uh, two instances. Now we're getting ready to come up and we're going to be approaching uh, Pishak, which is the Passover. It is the, the celebration of Moses and the children of Israel the last night before they left Egypt. And it is a picture of Jesus Christ because the last Passover was what we would call the Last Supper. That was the last one that was done in the Old Testament. And Jesus revealed what it was. That's this coming up Friday, if I'm not mistaken. And what we're we're not gonna go, we're not gonna talk about that. But when we get to Thursday, we're gonna talk about the masses again in light of the coming death, burial, and resurrection as we get ready to celebrate resurrection. I don't celebrate Easter. Now, I know some people are going to be like, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't celebrate Estra. Amen. That's the goddess of Easter. Well, what we celebrate is resurrection. We re we celebrate yeah. the res. Matter of fact, I don't just celebrate it on once a year. Right. <laughs> I talk about his resurrection every time. Every time we talk yeah. about repent and be baptized, what do you think I'm talking about? <laughs> death, burial, resurrection. That's yeah. I'm talking yeah. about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. So yes. we're going to be talking about the masses. Don't trust the masses. So I want you to go with me to Daniel chapter three. I'm going to give you all a few points. Today is going to be a little different. All right. We're going to break up the monotony. The what? Monotony. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We're gonna break. We're gonna break up. We're gonna break up the schedule. We don't want to keep okay. moving and do the same thing over and over. Amen. It is never not need for me. You. Amen. Amen. Remember, y'all on Facebook, so they hear oh, y'all talk. I'm just sorry kidding. about <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm just letting y'all know, just in case you didn't know. All right, you can talk. I don't mind y'all talking. Amen. I want to hear from you all. Amen. Let's read Daniel chapter three, verse one. Sister Trina, there you go. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. Mm -hmm. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So he brought everybody and their mother. <laughs> and we say he brought everybody, he brought, I didn't even know they had sheriffs in uh, Babylon. 
They had sheriffs. They had counselors. Just in case you was going through something, that's not the type of counselor they were talking about. But you get my drift. They had treasurers, judges, everybody. Okay. Keep going. Yes, ma'am. Then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Verse four. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then and Herod cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, mm -mm. that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer and all kinds of music ye fall down and worship the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up then he hears the punishment verse six and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace all right we're gonna stop there i want you to go to uh verse eight well, actually, you know what? Just read seven. We're going to just read it all the way through. I want you to see it. Go ahead, read okay. that for me. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbook, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So who did? Some of the people. All, all, the, people. all the people. You can write next to that or right down right there in verse seven all the people that's the masses uh, the king said to do it and they did it mm. it didn't say anybody raised their hand and said excuse me king should we be worshiping you <laughs> <laughs> should we be worshiping the image of you nobody said i got a quick quick question what why you keep saying all these names of the music is just saying you could have just said instrument Right. Sack butt, the whole timer. You could so you ain't got no organs, you ain't got no drum. You just want to keep saying all these. Nobody, my point is nobody asked the question. <laughs> right. Buddy. right. I could do it right now. If we were all in a room, <laughs> let me get up and take off running. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to start running too. <laughs> Look, I could we could be on Zoom. If I start running at home, you'll be like, you're not even in California. <laughs> well, I don't know. They might be able to do something. <laughs> Right, you just take off running. Somebody, you don't know what's going on. This guy might be suicidal. Is just gonna run and jump off the bridge, and you running with him. What are we jumping for? <laughs> don't follow the masses. Don't follow the masses. Right. The masses will always tell you what you can't do. The glass is always half empty to the masses. Yeah. Wow. That's why the president is. Do you know who the most the most sued person is in the United States of America? The president. Not just Trump, all of them. Really? Every time somebody takes office, they get sued because every time they give a speech, they offend someone. <laughs> they offend someone. And they just get sued and turned against. Everything they say gets scrutinized and the mass is just blah, 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 blah. But then that same person who gets talked about comes to your town and says, hey, how's it going? Hi, Mr. President, you've been cussing them out on Facebook <laughs> all this week. <laughs> But the president, he got those secret servicemen with him. And everybody's like, all right, Donald Trump. He, look at this. You might not like President Trump when he was in office, right? But if he came into my office, we're attention on that. The president of the United States is here. Hello, sir. How's it going, sir? Great. It don't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. That's the president. Yes. All right. You know, Joe Biden walk in, he might trip a few times before he come in. <laughs> Great granddaddy Joe, but he's doing okay, all right? He's old, man. We need somebody old and a little slower than normal. You know, we need that. But my point is, you might be a Republican. You, All right, how you doing, Mr. President? No, I thought you didn't. It's you're going with the masses. You don't want to feel uncomfortable. Mm. So I'm going to give you this, and then we're going to go back to the lesson. I used to, I'm, I was a recruiter, and what they taught us to do is that if you have a group of people in a room and you have somebody that you're trying to get to join the Navy, what they would do is they would say, after you present your little thing, at the end of it, you look at them and say, do you want to join the Navy? 
And then they say, don't say a word. Whoever, matter of fact, they would say, whoever speaks first loses. Just sit there and they're gonna squirm because there's people around them. And there are people who have committed to going to the Navy for four years. Mm -hmm. They didn't wanna go because they felt uncomfortable and everybody in the room said yes. So let well, me say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be like the masses. All right, let me give you, let me give you some things and then we're gonna go on down. Let's look at verse eight. What did it say right there, Sister Trina? Watch this. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Mm -hmm. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harps, all the instruments. Right, that's a lot they're going to keep saying. <laughs> yep, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Here it is, verse 12. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They went against the grain. They went against the grain. Yep. Everybody is doing, your mama taught you when you was little, if just because everybody else is doing wrong, you don't do wrong. But mama, let me shut up. <laughs> Because I guarantee you, all of us got on some clothes. We dress by rules that somebody else made up. I remember one day, because I'm not a clothes guy, right? If, I, if they just had, really, my favorite clothes of all time was the onesie, the Superman onesie with the foot, the foot in them. When you could put your yard on, it's when you were a baby. If they had a grown man version of that, I would be. It would have a cross <laughs> or something. Hey, God. It's my favorite thing of all time. So one day I'm sitting there and I was like, why can't you wear white after Labor Day? Right. <laughs> as I can, if I want to wear a pearly white suit, right. I should be able to wear a pearl white suit. Well, let me ask you this. Well, well, why is it that this shoe is in style and that one is not? I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Right. Who told you what it look what looks good? Right. <laughs> they did. Do you get what I'm saying? They we don't even know who they are. It's the man, right. you know, the man, nobody know, right. never seen them, but the man has created this. And these men had the, the heart to go against the grain. So I wanna give you a few points. Number one, the masses are motivated by men. Mm -hmm. They're motivated by men. This goes with the church. It's, it's, it's been a problem since before Paul's day. Paul, Paul got so mad at it, he would just say, I'm going to allow you to glory in me for a while. <laughs> they kept trying to say, ooh, I'm with Paul. He said, you know what, just go ahead. Just, okay. <laughs> I'm tired of telling you to stop glory. He had to even tell him, was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in Paul's name? Wow. No, you were baptized in the name of Jesus. Jesus died for you. Why don't you talk about Jesus? But one says, I'm of Paul. I'm of Kepha or Cephas, which is Peter. I'm of... I'm of uh, uh, Bartholomew, I'm of him, I'm of, he's like, no, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And if you look at us today, our churches are separated around personalities. Mm -hmm. Satan is having a field day because all you have to do is kill the personality. Jonathan Durrell Guy, that's my middle name. You can't say it again, only my mama. Jonathan Durrell Guy <laughs> will die one day. But Jesus, he never died. Right. Don't let me sit up and think I'm so I'm something that you need the word from my lips. He can dry these lips up and my heart can stop and someone else will step in my place. It's the Holy Ghost. That's right. That speaks. Yeah. You know how many great men and women of God have come throughout the ages that we never even heard of? There was a woman named Corey Ten Boom, yeah. C-O-R-I, middle name T-E-N, last name Boom, B-O-O-M. She was so anointed that they, uh, the chapel that she prayed in is like a monument. And Benny Hinn and some of them said they went in and they fell on their face. The glory of God was in there. She prayed in it so much. Mm. 
Okay. Do you know there's a man named Jonathan Goforth mm. that, 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 that preached the gospel all throughout China and brought the, the first revolution of the Holy Ghost into China and his name is never mentioned? Do you know there are pre people? There's a man who went to the Native Americans to preach. He, he would... He had uh, tuberculosis from his travels to preach the gospel, and he would be praying, coughing up lungs and praying for the Native Americans. And then after his death, a revival broke out amongst them. God don't need you and me. He doesn't need you and I. He doesn't need your personality. So people are caught up on personalities, and God is caught up upon the things you cannot see. All right. So people will be caught up on personalities. Now, I'm going to just give you a little some little points here. You can use this in every aspect of your life. If you're doing business, you'll notice that when you go into business, whatever field you're in, they're going to start naming names. Who's the man? What you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. Military. That's the first thing. Oh, OK, you you such and such. Uh, he raised you up. He taught you how to. Yeah. yeah OK, I got him. That's my boy. I'm going to take care of you. Now. Right. It's always in somebody else's yeah. name. Police <laughs> department. Tell me I'm lying. Oh, you yeah. under sheriff. Listen, that's that's my, that's my mentor. Right. It don't matter yeah. if you. Well, I'm a, I'm a cook. I'm a clerk. I'm a press. It's always coming in the name of another. This is where Jesus blew them their minds because all of the rabbis came in the name of another rabbi. But Jesus taught as one having authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He looked at him and said, you have heard it has been said of old, thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you, <laughs> whoever is angry with his brother without cause is a murderer. He said, you have heard it has been said. Moses wrote it down. But guess who is the word that he wrote it down? It was me. Walk with authority, and that's why they couldn't stand his old disciples. They were unlearned, uh, 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 didn't go to cemetery. I mean, seminary. They didn't, have, they didn't have 32 degrees making them on, on making them frozen. They were on fire with the Holy Ghost, and they were walking past the religious people doing things they ought not, mm. healing the sick and raising the dead and healing with their shop. I want to be a part of that group. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes. It's the elite. Mm. It's the few. Yeah. I ain't going I can't finish that. My Navy person. Going, I can't say the pride in the Marines. The Navy in me just say the Navy. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> but y'all get my, my point. It's the few. It's the, the few. He's looking for the few. He's looking for the remnant. Yeah. I want you to see something. Look at the first scripture. Read that for me, Sister Trina. This is powerful. This is speaking to our day. Watch this. Read that for me. Chapter three and one. Yes, ma'am. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. Stop. Three score is 60. It was 60 by six. Mm. Six, six, six. Mm. Oh. Uh oh. Mm. Wow. So mm. this is very, wow. very, very important. I want you to see it yeah. because the Antichrist will make an image of himself, which I told you what that is. That image is an artificial intelligence. Yeah. And then he brings it to life. And then he causes them to take the mark of, this is a dry run by Satan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He tells them to fall down and worship. And the scripture says in Revelation that whoever will not worship the image or take his mark, he will cause them to be killed. Yeah. All right. The, the, I want to get. I want you to get this. If you look at the three Hebrew boys' stories, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it is all about the end times. Wow! They are thrown into a fiery furnace. The fiery furnace is heated up seven times. Mm. Seven times, representing each one of the trumpets that will blow during the tribulation. Mm. On the seventh trumpet, the Bible says the Lord Himself will come back. Yeah, well, what happens that. after the seventh time the furnace was burning, he threw the Hebrew boys in. He said, I thought we only threw three in there. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Jesus showed up. The last one looks like the son it's of God. Jesus was illustrating. This is what it will be like. They're yeah. thrown in the fire for refusing to bow down to the image. Mm. The artificial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that message, the Lord is saying, you're not just going to start doing that. You got to walk against the grain now. Now, <laughs> you don't look, you don't just 
smoke weed your whole life and be like, you know what, today I probably just don't want to do it. You you usually got to wean yourself off that thing, right? So here's the thing. Right. You are going to, you can't just show up in the tribulation normally doing what everybody else does. Yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden going to say, for God, I live and God, I'll just die. You want to kill me? No. Yeah, the yeah, masses yeah. Is, is like, I don't know. So, man, I tell this story all the time. It's in Russia. It was illegal in Russia to be a believer at the time. And the believers were meeting in a cave a few miles outside of the city. So while they're meeting and praying and praising in this cave, two soldiers walk in with AK-47s. They're in this little cave. There's no way out. They just came in the only way to come out. They're sitting there and they pulled their gun and they said, if you're not a believer, if you're not a Christian, get up out of here. And people took off running and they left. And it was like maybe three left and they all fell down and started crying. They, it was over. And when the last person left, they put their guns down and said, we're Christians too. We just wanted the fake yeah. ones to get out. Yeah. We didn't yeah. want it. We didn't, because if they were fake and they were there, they might tell on us. So we're glad they are up out of here. And my point is that would probably happen. In 90%, yeah. if them people that came to do them sh church shootings say, get out of you, <laughs> you're not a I, I, Well, you know, I ain't like the pastor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't bury my grandmama right anyway. I'd go down the street to First Baptist where they don't get shot up. People would be leaving with them little fingers up, walking out, because they want to go with the masses. They're yeah. afraid to sit there and say, well, he died for me. Hey. Right. My, my. This is the difference between religion mm -hmm. right. and real relationship, kingdom. Mm -hmm. People in the kingdom understand that we are war. We're living in a, in a host country, a world that is all against us. So if they capture us, sometimes it means death. Mm -hmm. So we stand up and say, for God, we live, for God, we die. But if it's just, I'm joined, I just joined this church and eh, you, you can... Come on, man. People walk away all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But y'all see this? Did y'all see that? Yeah. That yeah. This, he set this image up. And then what he did is I'm gonna give you a few more. Number two, he I gave you the run, the running, running example. If I take off, you guys will run too. But he he tells them what he wants to do. He says, therefore, verse seven, therefore, at that time, it says, when all the people heard the sound. Mm-hmm. The flute, the harp, the sabbatry, the, the all kinds of music. Mm. This is giving an illustration that for the masses, you need a lot of things to keep them busy. <laughs> I just want you to catch me, catch me. When Jesus returns, you get one sound. Mm. Sound of the trumpet. Matter of fact, I, I give you two sounds. You get a sound of the trumpet, mm -hmm. and then you hear a shout. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You hear a shout? And then you hear the sound of the shofar. And we say, uh-oh, all of the believers know when they hear it, oh, it's time. It's the thing we've been waiting on. It's now. It's now. It's not tomorrow. It's not two weeks from now. There's no more services anymore. It's time. It's ready for us to take off immortality. I mean, mortality and put on immortality. It's time for us to look at the grave. When my daddy get up, he's going to say, grave, where's your sting? <laughs> where is your victory it's been swallowed up in victory uh, my daddy used to sing this song, say victory victory shall be mine well i know when it will be at the last trumpet when the dead in christ shall rise first i can hear him just pick up where the song leave the if i hold my peace he gonna come up and let the lord fight my battle victory shall be mine well when it came to the masses you got when you hear the sound of the how many of them we hear with it says the trainer the salt tree the uh, it's three organs, <laughs> two <laughs> altos. <laughs> <laughs> when the tenors get on key and quit singing baritone, <laughs> all, of this, all of this stuff. You need all of this. And when you hear it now, it is time to bow down. No, 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 no. Jesus is already worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. The fake, the, the principle is the fake needs a lot. <laughs> The real doesn't. I, I, I. Mm -hmm. Look at this. You do not have to put rims on a Porsche. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> just let whatever is came out the factory let it ride you don't need to do anything to it now if you get you uh look i ain't against uh, uh camrys or corollas but if you get it you probably want to throw a couple of dollars into them wheels and get that thing looking real good but you don't have to matter of fact if you add something extra to something that is exquisite it devalues it and this is the principle the masses need too much mm. that has nothing to do with anything. You need all of these, you can just have one sultry. You couldn't have just one heart. <laughs> you couldn't just have a sa just one sack, but ding. No, he gotta have all that. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of this and all of that. La, 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 la. <laughs> when Jesus shows up, yeah. I was telling somebody, it was a guy who asked me about playing in the anointing. If he asked me about playing the piano, I would have told him what I would, what I told him when he said it. I, you can play better than me. You play a hundred times better than me. I play in one key. I only learned because we had a piano and I learned to write songs that God gave me. That's all I did. I didn't learn to play for people. So he asked me, how do you play in the anointing? I said, it's simple. I said, you follow the Holy Spirit. The greater the Holy Spirit, the less you play. Mm, yeah. you know, what do you mean? I said, when the, the, the real Holy Spirit, now I'm not talking about everybody is excited and pumped and pr trying to, I guess, invoke the presence of the Holy. I'm talking about when Jesus shows up, mm -hmm. there comes a silence upon the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of the, ah, he's here. Yes. <laughs> the one song that I know that's from God is that song that says, he is here, praise his name. Because that's all they say over and over again. Because when he's here, yeah. you have to be quiet yeah. in the presence of the king. And you play less. And the less you play, the more powerful it is. You can get to the point where when the spirit is there, it'll be almost one note. Mm -hmm. And the people are just, Hallelujah. and then when it really gets good, you stop all together and the weeping and the wailing raises up. Now, I wish I had time to teach on that. There's times in the scripture when the, the scripture says that their crying and their praise became one. You couldn't distinguish it between the two. This is when God shows up. When God shows up, you don't need a lot of instruments. We don't need a lot of skills. We don't need lights and cameras. Mm. Wow. The churches are set up like stages. Yeah. yeah. Turn the lights down. We got the lights, boom. You get a backdrop. I was listening to a guy, and I know how to do it all, but I was listening to him talk about it, and I and the Lord just said, is this me? The guy was saying, he was like, yeah, if you get pieces of wood, you put them in a certain configuration, you get a, a light tape. There's like LED tape, that this light. You put it on there in whatever color. You put it up in your back. Background. He says, make sure it's a black background and turn the lights down, put some lights onto that and then turn on your LED lights. And if you got a little smoke machine, that'll be the better. And then you're good. I said, when did the Holy Spirit show up? <laughs> all right. Amen. Amen. You got all the lights. You got cameras. You got uh, uh, all of this. Me and Brother Chris was talking about this today. He was saying, he says, so many of the brothers overseas want to be like us in America, when in reality... <laughs> we need to be like them because I'm talking to them and one of the brothers, I'm going to the mountain to pray for three days. I was like, I ain't never been to the mountain. I'll trip to go down on 75th street for three days. You done went up to a mountain with jackals and all type of stuff. You up there in the cave. He's up there like Elijah in them in a literal cave. Mm. Telling his wife and children, I'll be back. I'm going to seek the Lord and grabbing his Bible and walking away into the darkness. Come on now. But we they want what we have. No, we need that. Right. Yeah. You can have the lights. You can have the cameras. You can have all of that. I don't want to be the masses. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Lord says get the lights, then get all the light. You better get spinning lights, uh, <laughs> whatever type of light you want, he says to get. But if the Lord don't need it, don't need the light, he don't do it. Right. If he doesn't want it, don't do it. All right. Here's my next point. All right. My next two points. Number one, 
The masses are afraid to go against the grain. You can write that down. Nobody questioned the king because they were afraid. Which leads me to my next point. The masses fear the furnace. <laughs> the believer loves the furnace because the believer is equated to gold. <laughs> The fake is equated to wood and hay and stubble. If you put wood, hay, and stubble into a fire, it burns up. You put gold into the fire, it takes out all of the impurities. <laughs> Some of us are fighting to get, Lord, don't put me in this mess. But the, when he put you in the fire, you came out walking a little bit more holy. Mm. You came out praying a little bit more deeper. You, you came out worshiping a little harder, a little stronger. You had a testimony behind your tears when you were in the fire. The believer loves the furnace. Mm -hmm. The believer welcomes the tribulation. For when the time of trouble comes upon the earth, God is going to do miracles like you've never seen before. He's going to take a little bit of piece of bread and going to do the same miracle he did for the 5,000 right in your kitchen. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you want to see them do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, they turn against it. Don't be like the masses. Mm. The masses will send you to hell. Mm. That's true. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, now I'm talking about in every area of life. If you're doing a business, don't do everything. If you do what everybody else does, guess what you're going to get? Nothing. Because everybody can get it everywhere else. Don't start yeah. another McDonald's. Right. There's already a great McDonald's right now. That is a problem for me during this quarantine, but it's, <laughs> it's already good enough. Do yeah. something that God has given you that will be unique, that will be different. Now, don't be different just to try to be different. Those are two different types of people. They're not authentic. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You know the person mm -hmm. that always tries to just do, if you say go right, they just going to go left. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying when, when everybody says, oh, let's go left, you stop and say, Lord, which way do you want me to go? But we're all going left. I understand that. Maybe y'all all can hear God at the same time. Wink, wink, wink. Probably not. <laughs> Lord, where do you want me to go? If you want me to go to, look at this. The Lord, look at this. Let me give you an example. If Madam C.J. Walker, she created the what? Press and comb. Press, Press and comb. comb. Yeah. Madam C.J. Walker tried to take her stuff to the rich, elite, white population of that day. You'd have never heard of Madam C.J. Walker. Okay. You know why? Because the white ladies didn't need a press and comb. <laughs> I don't need a press and comb. They like, I woke up and my hair is already straight down. I don't need a press and comb. <laughs> they have no need for it. Right. But what did she do? She stayed where people didn't have anything. Oh, she's never going to do anything. They don't have anything. Yeah, they do. She got two cent. She got 10 cent. He got two dollars. If they get a little piece of all of that, it makes you the first millionaire. Yeah. Do are y'all hearing what I'm saying? She did. She did. Don't knock where God is leading you because it doesn't look like everybody else's. <laughs> Yeah. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Man, this is why people smoke weed. This is why this is when I first started smoking. That's when I, I stopped, obviously. But when I first smoked weed, it was because of what we call peer pressure. It's the masses. Masses. Man, come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's from the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is from the earth on earth. <laughs> we all from the earth. This bottle, everything is from. Man, come on, brother, just try. It. And then next, you know, you smoking and you sitting there, just feeling dumb, sleepy, <laughs> hungry, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and you know inside something ain't right. Right, exactly. But you just keep doing it because that's what everybody else is doing. Who started you to doing that? Would he, Would you have done it if you had never heard of it? No, they started you on it. Go, take this, take this track, take this, take that, right? Don't do what the masses say. You go where God tells you to go. All right, my, my next little group, because I got three minutes, is the agitators. 
<laughs> Come on, say that. The agitators. The agitators. I'm an agitator. <laughs> now, when I say agitate, you thinking somebody picking at you. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm going to make everybody around me uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Are y'all hearing me? I You're going to be agitated. uncomfortable. I'm going to agitate. You're going to be uncomfortable with how much I follow God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was, right. look at this. I heard it to my face. This is crazy. You're going to start a ministry just online. Who would come to... You, you're going to have to go into a building. I said, I don't know. But the Lord said, I just want you to hear me. He said, they're not going to be able to meet in building soon. Mm. I thought he meant in the tribulation, in the by and by. Right? <laughs> I didn't know COVID was coming. But my point is, follow God if it makes everybody around you uncomfortable. Who cares if it makes them uncomfortable? Yeah. Who cares? It's not your vision anyway. Right. I'm so tired right. of people yeah. trying to tell me what God wants for me, and it ain't even for them. Do you? That's what the kids say today. Do you, boo boo? I don't even know what all that means all the way. But do you, and I'm going to do me. Amen? Uh -huh. Don't be afraid. You know, I remember telling folks, I said, why is it that Christians are afraid to invite people to come to worship? And the world is never afraid to invite you to the club. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go drinking, girl. Let's go drinking, man. Let's go kick it. Let's go to the hookah bar. Let's go to the strip club. Let's go. They'll invite you openly. <laughs> man, come on. Let's go. We could get lit. We can have fun. You're like, man. And but when we get ready to talk to them about Jesus, invite them to Christ, what do we say? Um, hey man, I know you know, I know you don't really. <laughs> Would you do something if somebody asked you about something like that? No, not like that. Hey, it's this game. It's going to really be good. Um, I know you might not really want, maybe, somebody maybe you could bring them with you. Huh? <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, like, you're so unsure. I don't know whether to grab the tickets or just walk off. Oh, I don't know. Right. And this is the point. Do you really love Jesus? If you do, then tell him like you love him. So, right. Sister Jocelyn, when you said that, don't hesitate. Let him be like, man, she loved Jesus too much. I'd rather than <laughs> say that right. and to be agitated with my love for the Lord mm -hmm. than for me to fake like something I'm not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me, believers? I am. Oh, yeah. Agitators don't care who you are. You Nebuchadnezzar and <laughs> you're the king of Babylon and <laughs> what you telling me your resume for? Your resume can can't can compete to King of the Universe, right. <laughs> Lord right. of Lords. You know what I mean, Jehovah Jireh. And all. he can, you can't compete against all of that. He has all power. You talking yeah. about? You got some power to put me in the front. He has all power. He has power over fire itself, and yeah. he's going to prove it, old King. Matter of fact, let's look at what them boys said. Let's look at these old agitators. What they say when old King got to him. Okay, here it is, verse 16. Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, oh, Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's listen to what the king said first, because he's going to talk his little stuff. Okay. Let's look at verse 15. And this now, if you, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of these instruments and music, you fall <laughs> down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if you worship not, Ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? He's King of Kings. <laughs> He's Lord of Lords. He's El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He's everything I need. Let me tell you who this God is. Keep going, Nebuchadnezzar. What did he say? That Red Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. We ain't scared. <laughs> we're not careful we're not we're not you know you know you bite your tongue a little bit and you hesitate yeah um i know yeah. king i know you basically like yeah i know i want to I, I would bow down but you know god he says i shouldn't they didn't do that they didn't they said oh king nebuchadnezzar <laughs> we are not careful to answer Ooh. you in this matter let us tell you what we're not careful to do read it come on watch this is true <laughs> so our God, whom we serve, 
is able to deliver mm. us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand. Oh, read that, read that, read that one more time. What did they say? If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able. Stop. He's <laughs> what? He's able. able. He's able. Oh, 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 he's able. Right. Yes, you know Lord. He's able. Yes, he is. Look, the God whom we serve. Yes, yes look, Lord. The, the people who accused them said, mm -hmm. these men that you have appointed have yes. not bowed the nerve. They didn't say we work for Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Uh-uh. Right. They worked right. at Babylon for the government. The government was on their checks, but they were <laughs> working for the Lord because when believers work, we don't work as unto men. Hallelujah. We work right. as unto right. who? The Lord. Lord. So they Lord. looked at him yeah. and said, the God we serve, we don't serve you. Right. We're only here because yeah, of the God. disobedience of our fathers. But the Lord told us through the prophet Jeremiah, Settle down, get jobs. For 70 years, you're going to be in Babylon. So we're here under the authority of God's prophetic word. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> when the 70 years are up, hey, hey. we're going bye-bye. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so in the meantime, if you want to throw us in the furnace, feel free to throw us in the furnace. <laughs> that's, that's a bad man. Because yeah. oh, yes, yes. a firing squad, squad is kind of quick. Right. Yeah. yeah. Electric, yeah. you know, go, 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 and then you're done. But With the fire, right. you're like, ah, ah, you're trying to get, you're trying right. to get out of there, screaming, you're suffocating. The fire was so hot, people. Yeah. That it killed the men that threw them in. Yes. Yes, Lord. Which is a, which is a prophecy showing that even the people who try to torment us and kill us during the tribulation. Mm. What they're going to try to kill us with will eventually kill them. They yeah. <laughs> yeah. it, it up seven times, and the mighty man was slain. But these three little boys stood there in the fire. Mm. Yeah. When they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you afraid to step out and do what God has told you to do? Yes. If God before you, who on earth be is being you. against you? Yes. Nobody. The Lord is saying, you not moving is a sign of distrust. It's you looking me in the face and saying, God, I know you're God. Right. I'm more afraid of Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm more afraid of my family's faces. I'm more mm -hmm. afraid to, of, of these people, of sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm more afraid of stepping out and launching and doing what you want me to do. I'm more afraid of that than you. But the three Hebrew boys said, we know who we serve. Mm -hmm. Prophet. Yes, ma'am. They were confident in their relationship with God and they had great faith. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. right, if right. You, it's, it's like if you if you know who God is. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> look at this. Yes, Lord. Gotta know him. If you're struggling with whatever, do you not know the word of God says, and my God? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. All uh, so. needs, yes, according to what his, his riches. riches. How his rich is God? Yeah, he got he owned it all. Oh, wow. wait, we'll be waiting for you. Don't even we don't even know how much he has. No. <laughs> Look at this. All the riches we know come from earth, right? Yeah, all the gold, all the silver, all the diamonds, all the, the everything. It, it comes yeah. rubies, it all comes from earth. That's one planet. <laughs> out of two tr out of trillions of galaxies with trillions of planets the lord is sitting there saying yeah i own it all <laughs> i own so many jewels i made my my city out of just all jewels the, 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 you know the whole city is gold but the whole city is a jewel as well okay <laughs> he said i saw new jerusalem and it would look like a jasper stuff. It looked like a diamond. That word is diamond. Yes. But when it got close, I said, this is gold. But wait a minute, it's see-through gold. Right. You know, I want, I want me a see-through herringbone. I don't know if they got them in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Detroit, 70s, 80s, baby. I want a, a, a see-through gold herringbone <laughs> with my name on it, with two, two initials, JG. <laughs> I'll be like, I get that. I'll be like, glory to God, I got my. 
Could you picture walking on this street and you look down and you can see all the way through the bottom of it? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Jesus. It's the streets are gold, but they're transparent. But guess what's underneath the street? All of the 12 foundations that are full of different other gemstones. You're looking down and your feet is just glowing with all of the glory of the Lord. The light is flickering off of all of it. And the radiance of uh, man, just one moment there. Yes. And then we look and say, Lord, I don't know how we're going to do it. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> oh Lord, I need to do this. The Lord said, I got you, but I need to do that. I got you. I know you got me, but this is what I'm saying. I don't trust you. Right. Wow. Mm. That's what we're saying. Mm. But the Hebrew boy said, you can't really kill me if God don't want me dead. Mm. Are you going to kill me? I'm not going with the masses. You can get everybody in the world to bow the knee. You can get Daniel, who was their kind of their older friend. Daniel was with him. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were all brought to, to Babylon as slaves together. They was like, Daniel could bow. I ain't bowing to nobody. We serve the Lord. And that's what God did. He spared them. Amen. So look, here's my questions to you. Yeah, this is a little different. I'm finished now. I'm finished. It's, I got two minutes. Now I got some questions for you. Here's the question. Why do people hesitate to do what God says to do? Why do you feel? And give me some explanation about it. Fearful of what other people might say when you do it. Have you all ever been afraid of some that God told you to do? Yes. Yes. What, what was it? Give me a little bit about that. What was it that made you afraid? What were some of the thoughts that went into your mind? I was uncomfortable. Say it again, Sister Johnson, and I'm going to go to uh, Elder Larkins. I was uncomfortable. I, I, you know, I had, the day before that, I was just partying with the same people. Mm. You know? Oh, okay. It makes it hard. Uh, I had, that. I had that experience. Um, I I was just partying with those same people. So, but it was a I left before them that night because I felt terrible all of a sudden. I was just like, I do not need to be here. I my whole drunk and everything went away. I was just like, <laughs> I'm going home, you know. And so, um, the next day, I just felt the burden to like call the people that I went with to make sure they were okay, and I wanted to pray for them and stuff, you know. So I didn't know how to do that. Cause you know, normally, the, well, in my life anyway, the next day I'm like, girl, last night and girl. And, but I was like, hey, are you okay? And well, listen, I know this might sound weird, but can I pray for you? Like, I just, you were on my mind, you know, my friend was like, girls, you all right? Girl, you need to lay down, drink some water or something. And you, I was like, you know, it was, it was awkward. And I went ahead and did it. And it was like a halfway prayer because I started feeling weird, you know? So I was just like, Lord, thank you for keeping us last night. Lord, I'm glad everybody's okay. Okay, man, Lord, cover, you know, like that. And I knew that the Lord wanted me to do more. I felt like he did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, anyway, that was my little experience with that. Fear, fear comes to us all. Fear comes. It, it came to me in a similar way, too. I was going to be being disobedient. Like, you know how you get in trouble because you didn't do. I felt like that. You know what I mean? Like, you better, you need, I don't care how you do it. You need to go do this, though, you know? That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. That was awesome, Sister Jocelyn. Yeah. You're exactly Amen. right. Yeah. Uh, my experience is uh, failure. You know, a lot of times God tell you to do something, but you're scared you're going to fail in what you're doing, and it makes you draw back. You think mm -hmm. you believe God and you have the faith, but you're scared <laughs> that you're going to fail if you go and do what God tell you to do. So, that's been my biggest thing was when coming up was failure. And when you step out and you do what God tell you to do, and he does what he said he's going to do, it steady increases your faith to know that he's with you. But my biggest yeah. thing was just, God would tell me to do something. And I'd be like, what if it's not you? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. doubt in your mind is mm -hmm. maybe that ain't God telling you to do that, you know? But when I went on and did it, God, I knew it was God, but my biggest thing I just want to say would be uh, sometimes 
you worry about failure. Also, along with they piggyback and said that uh, you worry about what people will say too. That's yeah. a drawback too. But failure, the thing, the part of being failure, especially when you came up in life and you always felt that you was a failure. You know, it really the enemy worked that in you that you know you you know you you a failure. You know, but that's mm-hmm. that's just a little piece I was going to add. In. Amen. And just to yeah. throw this out. All of the scriptures we read, we read them in hindsight. Right. Easy to say, jump out on the water when you weren't in the boat during the storm. Peter didn't know, that hadn't been written yet. He could have sunk. (laughs) He could have died right there. "Ah!" And if we ain't carried him away, we would never see Peter again. So it's easy to say, yeah, you got to get out on that water, right? (laughs) But then when you really, you you on that boat in the, 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 the Lake Michigan, (laughs) <laughs> like that ain't the Lord. I'm tripping. I'm gonna just go ahead and sing with this. Thing. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's different. You're right. You're right, Elder. It is. But we just gotta believe and step yeah. forth. Amen. Anybody else? You know what? Uh, what's your name? Prophet. <laughs> when they were talking, especially, especially Sister Jocelyn, um, it came to me. Lord brought it up in my spirit. I, John 4, 1 through 6. And it said, try the spirit to see, is it, to see if it is of God or some other kind of spirit. You're a child of God. You ain't got no, you ain't got, you don't have to have that fear in you. Right. You mm-hmm. the word. He gave it to you. He is your strength. Right. He, mm-hmm. he, if the Lord brought it to you to say something to somebody, you better do it. You don't want somebody else to do it in your stead. Right. Right. And let me give y'all this. Watch this. The scripture never even said God told him not to bow. He did not. But it was some things. Some things you don't have to even ask God about. That's right. (laughs) Lord, should I be fornicating? The Lord is like, no answer. (laughs) Lord, the Lord ain't gave me no answer on whether. I should stop fornicating. <laughs> That's because he already told you. Why is he going to tell you to do that? Lord, I feel like killing on such and such. Should I kill him or not? If the Lord tell me not, I won't kill him. <laughs> You're in jail for life because the Lord didn't tell you to do what he ought. You thou shalt not kill. That's his commandment. Thou shalt have no other God before me. You know. You Look at this. You know. Even people in the world know. They do. That's true. When they, when they come to Jesus, they come back and say, you know what? I can't. I always knew. You know, that's the one common thing that's always talked that said when someone cheats. Mm-hmm. The other person I says, "I knew it. I, I just knew it. They mm-hmm. knew it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean?" But what they're saying is, "I saw it." But what I did is, I blinded myself on purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's what we do when God tells us something that we ne- not necessarily want to do. We blind mm-hmm. our own selves. Man, I am. Oh, I'm preaching to myself. All right, anybody else? <laughs> um, you know, I, it, when the Lord told me, to, which I've been working on this a while, that as it is in heaven, uh, I said to the Lord about three weeks ago, I said, you know, Father, I know what my problem is because I've been dragging my feet doing what you said do. I said, my problem is I want you to spell out what my first step is, second step, third step, fourth step. Then I will move. I can move. But you know what? He didn't say a word to me, but in my spirit came a knowing about Abraham and what he showed me, I saw Abraham's feet. I didn't see the whole of Abraham, just his feet. And I knew what he was saying because he said, he told Abraham, you go and I'm going to show you where to go. You're not going to have A, B, C, D all lined out. You do A and then there will come B and I'll show you C. You just keep keep it moving. Amen. You know, that's a lot of time is where my problem is. I want everything spelled out in, in black and white. And he just is not doing that all the time. Well, it must be genetic. I think you passed that to me. I don't know about my other sister. Yeah, me too. It's a confirmation. It's been passed down. However, (laughs) okay, so it's really genetic. It's in the guy gene pool. When I'm sitting here, I'm like, well, Lord, I'm ready. I was sitting there. I said, Lord, I'm ready. Uh, Give me the plan for KGN. I have my pen. I'm still waiting. He gives, <laughs> he gives me one here. He gives me one there. 
You know what he does? He opens up the doors. God yes. opens up windows. Yes. He's a window opener. Yes. He's a door opener. He's a door closer. Some of us know, yo, I'm going through that door and he just, lo- it's just locked. You know, some of us try to grab on with two feet and two hands and pull the door. He says, he's closing the door, just let it alone. And if you stay there long enough, if you don't squirm in your seat, the right door will open up. And all you got to do is do what? Walk. Walk. Yeah. Glory to God. All right, I got another question for you guys. Prophet, I want to add one more. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Add one more. Go ahead. See, some of us some of us can relate to this, some of us can't, but that, like you talk about with the gene pool, I've been blessed to be on the winning side of most things in my life. And and that's it, it's not that's not an arrogant thing. That's just what God blessed me with. I got silly talent, silly things I accomplish well. So when you're on that side where you're used to being a winner, you're not necessarily scared to lose, but you're scared about mm-hmm. what's gonna happen when I do win. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. It, it's it, it's a different effect to know. When you go to school and you get good grades, and then you watch your kids good, good, good grades and all that, and know it's genetic, and you come from a, a a lineage of winners. But what happens when I do win? It's almost right. it's almost that that same fear of flying, but it's a different it's in a different aspect because it says, what happens if I do take it to the next level? Then I won't be able to hang out with my friends. Then I won't be able to do this, don't do that, because I already know I'm gonna win. I know right. I'm gonna be successful, but everything's gonna change after that point. Right. Yeah. The 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 that's the most dangerous group. And let me explain why. What I mean by that is usually the rich people don't come to Jesus. Right. Because they made it. I made it. Mm. That billionaire just died on his plane. It was a private mm. plane. Mm. It don't matter if it was private or public. <laughs> you still died on the plane. And the point yeah, yeah. is, all your money, you know them old Egyptians, they tried to take that money into the next life. <laughs> I mean, they was buried, wrapped in it. They was, uh uh-uh, don't get my gold to none of my kids. Rap, make an image of me. Put me in it. Mummify me so my bones don't get good. They tried to take every drop of it with them. And you know what happened? Somebody came along after they died and stole all their money. And the success, I love that point, Brother Thomas. Success can be just as dangerous. I, that's one of my other prayers. Lord, don't let me get something that I ain't ready to get. Yeah. Yeah. Blow up and you get in front of the people and fall because you couldn't handle it. All right, let me give you this. Look, agitators are people that are not afraid to walk alone. They're not afraid to walk alone. But what they don't realize is if you walk alone, God has somebody else that's walking alone. Mm-hmm. You got another person that's mm-hmm. saying, as for me in my house, mm-hmm. you shall serve the Lord. And all you gotta do is two or three of you all <laughs> come together in his name. And guess what he does? He shows up. Glory to God. So this is my point. Why is it so hard to walk alone? Why is it so hard? Just it's no right or wrong answer. Just whatever you feel, whatever you want to say. And I want to hear from everybody. I want to hear from even if it's just one little point. Sister Deborah, you look like you got some. Deborah Carter, you got some. You smiling over there. I know you got. Well. It's hard to walk alone sometimes if you're not confident. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You have to have confidence. Um, it's like when, when I was sent to New Mama Mariah with the biblical counseling uh, uh, class, I was not confident at all. <laughs> that right. was a comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I had to learn to trust God because I, if, I didn't have a confidence in myself. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. We, we blame we blame us because we're afraid to say, Lord, it's it's you. Mm-hmm. Do y'all get what I'm saying? So it's like, Lord, I trust you. I don't trust me. How many of y'all ever <laughs> said that? Right. Say something to you all. That okay. is a lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It is not the truth. I know you don't want to hear me say that. What really is that you're saying is, if God asked you to do it, then that means you can do it. That's yeah. true. Very good. He, if Very. he's God and he knows everything, 
and he oh. chose you and you say, I don't trust you, yes. then that means you don't trust God yeah. because God yeah. trusts you to yeah. give it to you. Ah, right. man, I said something. You can rewind yes. it. This is being recorded. Thanks, Sister Erica. This is being recorded. They can go back and see all them yous I put together, right? <laughs> don't look. If the Lord made painted you the picture, don't look in the mirror and say, I'm ugly. How dare yeah. you? Mm. Right. You're God's masterpiece. Mm. <laughs> oh, you don't look like her? You never will. You never will. Who wants, why would God want everybody to look like and you know, people got the nerve to look and say, ooh, how did she get him? <laughs> all these girls that look pretty and they look just alike, they all just alike. Well, guess what? You be you, and guess what? That joker who's just weird like you will come <laughs> over and choose you. But when you try to dress up like Becky with the good hair, or I'm coming up with all the names I done heard, uh, whoever and the whoever, uh, uh, all, I don't know. Like, yes, all of them. Right when you, when you when you try to be like them, you miss your blessing. Mm. Be you, be you. So you know don't look at this. Let me say this. It's not about. Let me give you that. Let me just say that because I've said that a million times. I went to the Lord in prayer and said, "Lord, it's not you. It's just me. I've I've messed up before." And he, he's like, "Shh, shut up." <laughs> <laughs> so so you know me. more than me. Mm. You, know more than, you know more than God no. mm -hmm. you can go and preach to the people in your building I can't go and preach you just called the Lord a liar a liar Woo. he said you can you just said I can't mm. Mm. I'm just trying to say it so this time when the Lord said this time you should be waiting yeah, Lord, I'm going. <laughs> what you need? Do I need to buy a different Bible? Because I got this one that got all your words in red. Do I need to get another, right? You need to be ready to do it and say, look, look, Elder, if I fail, all I got to do is make sure I fail forward. Amen. I might fall. All I got to do is just fall in the right direction. As long as I don't fall back. Yeah. I win. If I get up, that means I'm further than I was when I started. So yes, let, me add, right. let me open that up again. Why is it so hard to walk alone? Here. Who said that? I think it's because it's not a normal thing for a human being to do. It's not, it's not being normalized. Hmm. It's because us human beings we tend to do the thing that we've seen other people, like you had mentioned a few minutes ago. Right. That's just what I think. I could be wrong. No, you're right. People aren't used to walking alone. Right. Try to gather together. This is why we're scrambling to try to get back in the churches, right? We want to be together. I mean, we're together right now, but now I want to shake your hand and hug you, da 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 But when all your friends do one thing and you do the opposite, they usually pull together. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they make their position stronger because they can talk about you. <laughs> they have that in common. That's the truth. That's yes. why it happens. You look up and now you you haven't been in a group that you're the one that didn't leave with them and you with the group and next you know you're like I'm just talking about them. why am I talking about them? Yes. You do that. You have that in common. How dare she walk? How dare he? Somebody got to be first, y'all. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 like you mentioned earlier, like it's so easy for people to invite people to go to clubs and stuff like that, but hesitant to go invite people to go to church <laughs> or That's true. Um, praying and praising because mm -hmm. it's not being normalized. It's not like an everyday thing. Like, oh yeah, that's the right thing. No, it, for us human beings, it's like what normal is the bad one, which is so bad. Right. Right. And right. It's not bad. That's right. But it, the, 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 the standard, look at this. The masses are going to hell. They're going the wrong direction. Yes. That is so sad, but it's the truth. This is not my words. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus' words. He says, wide <laughs> is the gate and broad is the path that leads to destruction and many there be that go and threat. That
That word many is the majority. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's right. The majority yeah. think it's good. Somebody has something? Yeah. I, I, you know, like, oh, God, my husband died 19 years ago. I have learned in this Christian walk that it's a lonely walk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you're trying to stay on the narrow path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and not get on that wide path. You got to have a circle around you where you just can't let anybody in. But it don't stop you from going forward to do with the things that you need to do. Because, you know, God is with you. Right. And he's yeah. going to go forward. So, I mean, it's nothing wrong with walking alone. Right. Right. You got to be confident in yourself. You got to be confident mm -hmm. in your God and say, you got to be confident in him that he which begun in the work in you, he's going to complete yes. it in the day of Jesus Christ. So you got to be comfortable in your own skin. I was watching this thing where um, it was talking about um, <coughs> the life of Dave Chappelle. Now he's a comic, he's not a believer or whatever, but the thing was they were saying, we don't understand how he's able to do what he was able to do. They offered him $50 million, but it was against what he wanted to do. They wanted to control how he would make his comedy. So he walked away from $50 million, went yeah. to Africa. Y'all know the story. When he came back, do you know what he did? What people don't know that he did is when he came back, he, he spent 10 years out of comedy, but he was not stopping. He would take a, a, a battery uh, held little speaker with a microphone, go to a park, and start doing comedy and throw a little hat down and say, Hey, everybody. Da, da, da. And he said he would go to shows. He would just show up at a nightclub and, uh, at a comedy club and say, I would like to just come on stage and do comedy. And they would do it. So during them 10 years, when everybody thought they had destroyed his career, he actually became what now people are saying is the greatest comic to ever grab a microphone because he learned it in the parks. He learned how to tell jokes and be the best at his craft outside of the mainstream. He was perfected in the streets. Oh man, yeah. I don't talk to you. You're perfected in the streets, not in the the, the, the great, oh, it's so easy. It's easy. Anybody can worship God when there's music that's made for worshiping God and yeah. the person telling you how to lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can do it. But what about doing it when you're in your kitchen? Amen. I, yeah. Yeah. Well, when you don't have any music. Yes. Yeah. Well, when all of the churches are shut down, they're supposed to be. Let me shut up. <laughs> right. And you go in there, you everybody dropping dead. Do you know how to worship him when you're in when you're in India? Mm -hmm. Look at this. This is what I was faced with. And, and many of the people know what I'm talking about in the Navy. You go out to sea, you leave your wife. She don't know what you can do out there. You gone for six months. Ooh. Mm -hmm. You in this foreign country. What you gonna do? We went out witnessing. <laughs> we were passing tracks out to prostitutes. You don't want no drink? No, I want you to take Jesus. <laughs> Baptizing in the in the in the, the, the Thailand uh, ocean. You don't do that. Not there. Their oceans are topless. We didn't know they was topless at the time. We found out. And we didn't baptize at that particular place again. <laughs> I didn't want to make the deacons backslide. But my point is, is we went out there and, and one of the brothers said, man, I ain't never seen this. This one guy was, we were witnessing to this lady and she was, she was a prostitute. We were trying to get them into a ministry called Rahab Ministries that would come. And one of them, we saved, we got one saved. They would pull up in the van and almost kidnap her almost away from the pimps, they weren't kidnapping her, but they were hired her, give her a new name, take her to a different city. We were able to get one, but we were in this place and I'm giving her, talk, telling her about Jesus, Jesus love. And she was like, you don't want a girl? I was like, no. She was like, you don't want a drink? I was like, no, she was confused. She was like, Jesus? I said, Jesus, he's real. Mm, mm. And it was a guy sitting there drinking. Mm. He was from my ship. And the next day when we left, he came and he said, I want to know about Jesus. I was like, I said, I remember you, man. I said, why? He said, I never heard or saw anybody in that environment. <laughs> it was like the belly of the beast. We went and witnessed. Only one person got saved. When the tsunami happened, it wiped out everybody in that area. Wow. Wow. That was the beach that all of the water went out. And the people went to get the fish and the tsunami came and killed 
thousands. That was the literal beach. And the Lord said, I want you to go. The, the, let me show you about following the Lord. He said, just go and pass them out. Just try to reach them. Tell them, warn them, warn them. I was afraid. You think I wasn't afraid? A man without his wife with these other guys, we got to witness the prostitutes. <laughs> I'm afraid, Lord. Man, I'm talking to myself. Mm. I lost mm. that a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Let's go. He said, jump into, we're going to baptize in the water. <laughs> hey, man. If he said, we're going to do it here, we're going to do it. If he says, we're going to go here, we're going to go here. Oh, you Lord, you want me to do what? Okay, we're going to go out in Indonesia and pass the gospel. You, It is punishable by death to preach the gospel? Yes. Do you mean if the Navy finds out they can kick me out? Yes. Well, let's go. I'll just get kicked out. Mm -hmm. But then you get comfortable. Mm-hmm. I could just do it in the bit. I could just start me a ministry and mm. Mm. have the people come down and give their tithes and offerings. Give them a quick sermon and they can leave. Look, that might be fine for others. I'm not blasting it. But look, I'm trying to teach you how to praise when you ain't at church. Amen. 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 I don't want nobody that's going to be saved on Sundays and Thursdays and Wednesdays. <laughs> catch him on a Saturday, you'd be like, oh, you ain't even that much saved. You don't care nothing about the Lord. You only talk about Jesus when somebody is talking about him. Yeah. No, every day. And let me say this, y'all, before we get ready to go. We're not going to just be doing Zoom meetings until Jesus comes back. <laughs> <laughs> just to throw that out, just so you know, we ain't going to be just, we're going to get together. We got to go to the streets. We got to win. We got to come together and worship. However, that is not the church you so let's start being it. let's be willing to i'm an agitator so i gotta agitate i gotta be willing to walk alone i gotta be willing to walk in a different direction i gotta be willing to not care who who such and such is i don't run down to worship because you say this particular pastor is there Right. Mm -hmm. I was right. telling this as a this today. I was telling her about the, the preachers and people I love to listen to. Most people don't even know. I don't know. How many of y'all know who Kit Henry is? Never heard of him. One of my, that's all the music I listen to. I pray to his music 24 seven. What is his name? His name is Kit Henry. Look, don't go and look him up. You might not like him. My point <laughs> is I'm different. <laughs> I'm different. He, but, is, yeah. he is a praise and worship leader from the 90s from a, a revival called the, um, I forgot the name of the revival, but it, it, it was a little revival and he, he sings all these 90s songs that's kind of like Bruce Springs thing a little bit. Pour oil on our praise. I'll be here singing and let your spirit come. <laughs> my wife hates the music. Oh, she can't. She's like, oh my God, here he's singing this music. I love listening to Benny Hinn. I listen to pastors from the, I listen to, uh, Oh, my phone is talking. I listen, I read the works of pastors that preached in the 17 and 1800s. My favorite sermons is Sinners in the Hand of an Angry God. Mm. Oh. It was written Who in the 1700s. That? I Who forgot his name. But but I just want you, to, I want you to get what I'm saying is, I went to the Lord and said, Lord, what do you want me to hear? What do you want me to say? Not what everybody else is saying. I don't look at other prophecies because I don't want them to influence me. Yeah. Lord, what do you want me to say? Go and tell them there's a second wave coming. But Lord, we're still in the first wave. I didn't ask you that. You asked me what you want me to say. Yes. I'm praying yesterday. I'm praying the last mess last Sunday. I was praying, and as I was getting ready to close, the Lord said, pray against shootings. Pray that God, I will protect the children. Pray it out. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. Yes. yeah. What happened the next day? Ooh, Lord. I didn't know that that was going to happen. He knew it. Look at this. Jesus knows all about, y'all know the rest of it. Yes, sir. Yes. I'll struggle. He will do what? Guide. Guide. Until the day is done. There's not a friend. Like the holy Jesus, no, he will speak. He speaks to you when you're away from the masses, when the, when the mm. sound is the quietest mm. and all of the fake people would have left you alone. They want to go with the masses. They want to wear the same clothes. They want to look the exact same. They want to do, they want to shout the same. 
They want to do all of the things mm. the same. But in the, when the when the when the music fades, ah. that's a song. When the music fades and all have slipped away, mm. can I simply come? That's all I want. When all of that stuff, the scripture says, and I'm gonna leave you alone. This I got two minutes. The scripture says that Elijah, there was a big old earthquake. Boom, 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 boom. Elijah was seeking the word, but the Bible says, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. He wasn't. <laughs> then there came a mighty rushing wind. Oh, he gotta be in that. Come on, now that's like the book of Acts. A mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. Right? Oh no, but the Lord was not in the wind. Wasn't in the wind. Then it was fire. Oh, come on, shut up in my bones. It gotta be fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And then the scripture says, and then there was a still small voice. Mm. Yes, yes. Maybe God wants you to be away from the masses so he can yes. finally talk to you. Yes. Uninterrupted. Mm. Yes. And tell you what you were supposed to do. I'm telling you, believers, I have been I, I've been fighting one specific thing since we started K-A-G-N. And that is dealing i wanted to literally start with no christians <laughs> you can ask brother chris you can ask sister one pastor one you can ask anybody to start i wanted all sinners that we just had to start from scratch the lord was like that's not going to work i want to <laughs> use my children you can't just tell me i can't use my children lord i want all the pimps these are the people i wanted I listed them out, all the people that nobody else wanted. And the Lord says, I want them too, but are you going to personally disciple them all, son? Mm -hmm. Then let them come. That's mm -hmm. what he said. So I said, Lord, amen. Your will be done. But here's my question. Will you let the opportunity, like I was going to do, for you to do what you were meant to do in life for Jesus Christ, pass you by thinking you have another day. Do you have another day? You don't know. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if you do have another day, how long <laughs> do you think this house of cards in this <laughs> world will last? How long do you think we can keep spending trillions of dollars mm -hmm. before the economy? I know that's right. Oh man. And those of you been taught, you know what follows that. Yeah. That's a world war, a global war. Two billion people dead. And then mm -hmm. the Antichrist, the revealing of the Antichrist. I don't know if that's in our generation or of our children's generation, but we look like we close. Look, I don't know if it's fire, but I smell smoke. Right. When there's smoke, there is fire. But I'm believing God is going to use you. I don't care if you're 22. I don't care if you're 92. If you got breath, and your heart can still break, there's hope for you. But when you get to the point where you know it all, God is going to do it this way. You, God will walk past you just like he did the Pharisees. He'll yeah. walk right past the, the preachers and the prophets and the great wisdom of men and all of these people. And he went to the old dumb fishermen who would just follow him. He said, yeah. follow me. And they said, they dropped their business. <laughs> they dropped all their businesses. <laughs> they walked away from their wives. He said two words. Follow me. Mm. Said, okay. The masses would have said what? But I got to. Um, oh, where we going? And I got to. Mm -hmm. But these old fishermen, they, you know, old Peter, and they were just dumb enough to just jump out on the water and start walking. Talking about, oh, Lord. And he, he, fell, but he got two or three steps in and said, Jesus, I should have did. But you need somebody that's just crazy enough to hear what God says and do it. And do it. I'm believing that's you. I know it's going to be me. I know it's going to be you. We just got to step out. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those under the sound of my voice. I pray for those that are online that is watching this. Lord, give us the courage, even my brothers and my sisters who are pastors, who are in ministry, give them the, the, the heart and the mental fortitude to say, you know what, even if they want to kick me out of this church, God, if you say to do it, I will not count up the cost. I will do what you said to do because you are the best mathematician. 
You have counted up the cost. You have provided the provision for the vision. And I know if I just step out, you will give me the next step. And if I take that next step, you'll give me the next step. And Lord, I won't build an altar on the steps. I only build the altars on the destination. Glory to God. And I will worship you all the way. Close eyes and all saying I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Let us move in the Holy Ghost. Let us be led by the spirit of God and not by the wisdom of men. Yes. Our prayer, Father, let us launch out into the deep. I don't want to be able to be in water that I can stand in, Lord. Jesus. I want to yes. be in water yes. that there's a threat of drowning, that you can perform the miracle and cause me to walk on that which should be my death and my demise. Mm -hmm. yeah. How can we raise the dead if no one dies? How can we heal the sick if no one is sick? How can we do any of these things if we want to stay in comfort and ease and relax and be raptured? Lord, take us into the danger zone. Take us into the place where people fear and yes. men's hearts shudder that we can hold on to you and say, God is with me and I'm not afraid of any devil in hell. I'm not afraid of any enemy, for greater is he that is in me than yes. he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. Thank it you. is in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hear Thank the Lord you. say, I'm giving, I'm sending another wave of jobs. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord says, this is what he Hallelujah. said. I don't even, even it's even people on Facebook. He said, when you feel it, apply for it. Mm. Mm. And I'm going to give it to you, mm. says the Lord. In mm. Jesus' name, Lord, we honor you. Amen. 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 Glory amen. to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Facebook. God bless you. Amen. Amen.